what is good everybody it's your boy champagne chico and we're back with another rebuild video i am moving these to mondays um i think you guys like the rebuilds a little more than the mutt stuff that i was trying to do i would rather adhere to you guys than try to play mutt because mutt is just toxic right now but we have a chicago bears rebuild today right now justin field seems like a one-man show and that's about it on offense he doesn't have any wide receivers his o-line is okay the tackles need some help the defense is also okay it's it's just not it's not a great look right now for the bears and they need to start fixing it soon or they'll waste justin fields career or justin fields could just leave when his contract's up which wouldn't be a good look for the bears either because it's already taken them this long to get an actual qb but before we get into it i'm going to ask you to please go down there and like and subscribe for me we got to 100 subscribers i wanted to ask you guys i'm also going to put another video out kind of an updated schedule type of thing but what do you guys want to see for that if you guys want to see a certain video for the 100 subscriber special or if you want me to just do a stream on saturday or something like that just let me know if not i just do the schedule as is and just keep giving y'all content like i'm already doing but let me know let me know and really we can just get into this bears rebuild we have to we have to rebuild a whole other team again we have to build them from the ground up with the very well-known champagne chico in the league right now he has won about four out of five championships three out of four championships right now and hopefully we can win another one with somebody like justin fields at qb1 so we do not have to draft a qb but we can focus on the defensive side of things and i'm looking to trade down i am looking to trade down in the drafts maybe to the third pick second pick maybe even a fourth pick just to see if i can get a lot of assets for it um and if not then we just drafted our spot but i want to keep it as realistic as possible and if it kind of gets off the hinges then it's kind of because we're taking a bit but champagne chico is now in the bears front office and we have a lot of work to do from the ground up we have to work with the running backs which is something that they have a issue with in terms of like who they want who do they want to use they have david montgomery who has been great in some games he has shown up in some games you have khalil herbert right behind him at a 78 overall in this game but you just don't know what to do right now i think david montgomery is about to be up for a contract if i'm not mistaken as you can see the line is kind of it's okay their guards are good the tackles not so much the tackles need help they have chase claypool they thought that was going to be a big thing for them they got byron pringle from the chiefs and he has not done much for them i am surprised he must be injured right now darnell mooney they're really wide receiver one when he's healthy just can't stay on the field right now you have a defense that the defensive line is abysmal their middle linebacker spot is abysmal because they traded away roquan smith to the ravens so you can't you have to figure it out you have to rebuild from the ground up and just try to find the right things in the draft and that's really our goal today to really bring in some young assets maybe some free agents but i'm trying to make this in a way that the bears just progressively get better over the years with justin fields becoming more and more of a top five qb so we are at the top of the draft board and of course bryce young is projected to still be the qb1 or the first pick in general if the bears end up trading it away i wouldn't think that they would draft bryce young to replace justin fields right now i think justin fields has a little too much potential for the bears to just give up on him after a year that he had more rushing yards in most of the games than the running backs did and it, he's just too versatile to give up on him so i wouldn't think that they would stick at the first pick or if they do they go with somebody like will anderson 
or Jalen Carter and just try to get that. But right now, we're in a situation that we have to figure out who we want to trade this pick to and what to do with that. We have to, when the mock drafts come out, we'll definitely have to take a look at what spots there are and what teams they are and what those teams are willing to give up for our pick and see how much value we can get out of having the first pick right now. At the end of the 2022 season, just to see, whoa, <laughs> the Chiefs made it to the Super Bowl and faced the 49ers and Austin Eckler, I'm sure, had an insane rushing performance. The same awards as usual in Madden. There's really no difference sometimes. But Austin Eckler winning Super Bowl MVP, that's interesting. The Chargers only won by three points against the 49ers. So in the first mock draft, they have us sticking at the first pick and taking Tyree Wilson. I'm not too sure about that. I'm sure that he's probably really, mm, no. No, he's not. His physicals are not good. Um, he could be good. I just don't really trust it as much as probably somebody like Jalen Carter being at defensive tackle. Um, he's also not great in this right now. Well, Anderson, we could also use maybe, I mean, I t it's difficult not to try to get Will Anderson, but we can go ahead and take a look at who has these picks in general. We could try to trade this pick to maybe the Colts. The Colts could be a, a trade candidate here. The Some of the trades that I've seen have given a lot to the Bears, meaning like DeForest Buckner and their first round pick and stuff like that. They have them taking Will Levis at this pick. I'm sure they would love to have the first pick and just get Bryce Young, who was the QB1 in this draft. As far as I know right now, it seems like CJ Stroud is just falling down actual mock drafts right now. And it seems like he fell in this one, too. He's at the 13th spot, but he's supposed to be projected to go top five. We will have to see about that. We could also go with the Seahawks and they have to give us both of their first round picks. It really just depends on who has more assets that we can get from right now. I could use that fifth pick and the 20th pick to get some good talent right now. It just really depends. I would like to get Will Anderson. I'm hoping that he would fall to five, but I'm definitely going to have to see what I can get from the Seahawks and if it's really worth it right now. But we also have some people to renegotiate with. David Montgomery is up for a contract. He only won 16 mil for five years. He is 26, so that's probably why we have a lot of cap room right now. We almost have a full cap because Justin Fields is still on his rookie contract, and he's going to be for a good while. I don't like any of these other players that we would probably have to re-sign. Riley Reef, sorry you have to go, buddy. Just one letter away from being an iconic name. I really didn't think that he made a difference on the team. I don't think it's worth paying him 3.72 million over two years and a 1.14 signing bonus. The one that I'm concerned about is David Montgomery right now. He could develop. He could definitely develop. I could also just re-sign him just to have him as a trade piece if I'm able to get a running back in free agency and then just pack him up for something else. I don't know. I might have to wait until like the last day of free agency to trade away this first pick to really make sure that I get the value that I'm supposed to get for that. But David Montgomery is going to come back to the Bears for right now. Um, he is expendable, though, so I'm not too set on him staying on the team. I know the Bears have like a wishy-washy situation with him. So that's really the only re-signing that I want to do at the moment. And we can go ahead and see who is in free agency right now. All right. So after the first day of free agency, I have made some big offers to some big players right now. We have Tony Pollard right here. We're his only offer right now, but we're his best offer right now. Odell Beckham, another one that we're his best offer. Josh Allen, I kind of went a little above and beyond compared to the other teams. If it gets to that certain point in the rebuild that he's not developing and he's regressing, maybe we might have to pack him up since I'm not overpaying him, but I'm kind of acting as if I'm the Bears right now. 
CJ Gardner Johnson is somebody that I offered a contract to. We're on the same level as almost everybody else. I don't really want to overpay him. Um, we can always find a strong safety in a draft, if anything. Orlando Brown is somebody that I really wanted. I gave him probably the best offer I could give him, and we're still tied with two other teams. So we still have 84 mil or 85 in reality in cap. So I'm hoping that we do get some of these players. If I get Pollard, then Montgomery's probably going to be on his way out. Khalil Herbert, I would like to keep for right now since he still is on his contract. But if his contract is going to be up next year, then he might have to go too. So we did end up getting Tony Pollard, Oda Beckham Jr., and Josh Allen. I hope it pans out. But I tried to get Michael Thomas. He really didn't want to come to our team. So I went with the other option of the rumors that's been happening. Either Michael Thomas or Odell Beckham Jr. has been like the... The hearsay right now, Orlando Brown ended up going to the Falcons. That doesn't help us a lot. CJ Gardner Johnson went to the Commanders. It hurts, but now we have to look for some better options. I think cornerback needs help. Other than Jalen Johnson, it's not looking good right now. We could get some one-year rentals and just deal with it as we go right now and as we go through the drafts. But I could really just sign these guys. I mean, Byron Murphy would be more of a long-term commitment. Not sure if he would be too interested to come to our team. I'll give him a neutral one. If he doesn't accept it, then oh well. But I'm kind of for... Wow. I'm kind of focused on just trying to get players that can help us out right now. I'm going to take this offer away from Byron Murphy. And worry about the future as we go with the picks. So... I'm going to go ahead and look at what else I can get here and come back to y'all. So after day two of free agency, we are basically signing a lot of rentals right now. I'm not really looking to make long term commitments in this free agency class. It's not the best one. Um, I would rather kind of save my money, but still kind of be competitive in this next season. We're trying to get Marcus Peters. We're his top option. Jonathan Jones, Denzel Perriman. Miko Hardman would be a great addition for Justin Fields just to launch it downfield. He will get the speed and be able to get that ball downfield. William Jackson III were his first option. A lot of one-year deals except for like strong positions like Terrence Steele at right tackle. I would love to have him for multiple years. Having a decent right tackle is always helpful. And Alexander Johnson. I gave him a one-year deal. I'm trying to make the middle linebackers work and then hopefully draft a outside linebacker in the draft and we already got josh allen so he's at left outside i'm pretty sure will anderson's at right outside so i'm looking at will anderson um defensive line not a lot of great options in free agency might have to find it in the draft or in future drafts but I like how we're doing right now. I think we're going to do pretty well in this day two. And then on day three, I think I'm going to have to take a look at what I can get for that first pick. So after day two, we did end up getting most of our signings. We got Marcus Peters, Perriman, Hardman, Jackson, Steele, and Johnson. But Jonathan Jones ended up choosing the Jaguars for some reason. They had a worse offer than us. I guess you wanted less money. Doesn't really matter to me, but I think that's going to be about it. Oh, we don't have a punter. I might have to sign Tommy Townsend because punters are important in this game. We do have some trade offers for David Montgomery. We did re-sign him. Um, some good options. Some decent options, I would say. DJ Reed would be interesting. Rashad White and Gage. Uh... I was kind of, this George Pickens one does not look bad. He's still going to be on his rookie contract for a while. And we get a fourth round pick, which is fine. I mean, I can try to use the fourth round pick as best as I can. Probably not going to work out as much. I'm trying to build around Justin Fields. I really am. And I think getting George Pickens is going to help him a lot. Um, not that interested in Robinson and Orarie. And a seventh round pick, that's not 
my biggest concern. I don't know why I would trade a running back for a worse running back in a fifth pick, but that's the Patriots for you. Um, I think I'm going to go with this trade for George Pickens. It's not a bad trade at all. I like the fact that it's another young wide receiver to put next to Justin Fields. Now, we also have trades for Chase Claypool. And I am going to go ahead and trade for Asante Samuel. I like that trade a lot more since he is younger and cornerbacks are pretty important in this rebuild right now. I didn't really like too many of the other options. I feel like Van Der Esch is overpaid probably. This right end I'm not too familiar with. And I don't know. I feel like I can just get right ends in general pretty easily. Asante Samuel on his rookie contract. I will take him. And Chase Claypool is gone. We have our wide receiver room right now that I'm very confident in. He was a wide receiver five. So we will go ahead and look for the trade for the number one pick and try to get the most value possible. Oh, well, damn. Okay, so might look kind of stupid right now, right? But um, I really think DK is going to end up... If Geno Smith doesn't end up coming back, or if he even if he does, I realize that one, Odell is injured for a while. And for the Bears, I think they could use him as trade value at the moment, um, especially me at the moment. So I wanted to get DK. I feel like he'll develop very well. Um, having someone like DK next to Justin Fields. So now our room would be DK Metcalf, Darnell Mooney, and George Pickens. That is our wide receiver room. And that's our wide receiver room of the future. And with that, we gave up the first pick for the fifth pick and DK. We also gave up Odell, who probably isn't even going to play this season. And a second round pick next year. I literally was trying to go through almost everything. Everything for the trade. But Madden's trading for like a player like DK is unrealistic. It's very unrealistic. And I kind of had to put in Odell and the second round pick next year in order to do it. But I'm more focused on this year and getting some good draft picks in this one. Hopefully being competitive this year. And then kind of keep building around it next year. I'm most likely going to trade for another second round pick by the end of this season. Depending on who has a contract expiration. So yeah. We traded away the first Odell and a second round pick for DK and their fifth pick. So I'm hoping that Will Anderson does drop to the fifth pick. Um, that's really my plan here. There was some mock drafts that came out recently. I'm hoping that Will Anderson isn't too high. He isn't at the moment. He's supposed to drop to six at that. So, hmm, it, it's a big risk. It is a big risk, but I really like Will Anderson, and I wanted to get some value out of it. I think I got value. Might be controversial for y'all watching, but I do like our roster right now. I do like the way that we're building around Justin Fields at the moment. I mean, he has somebody like DK just to throw it up to Darnell Mooney. We still have Miko Hardman. I completely forgot about that. George Pickens. Yeah. Yeah, this right tackle needs to come back from injury at some point, but he will. He'll probably come back before the season. Um, Marcus Peters, J Johnson, William Jackson. Asante Samuel Jr., I think he's going to be great. I actually want to move him to CB3 um, to give him more playing time. But I like this right now. I'm really planning to get Will Anderson at right outside linebacker, and everything else kind of just has to fall into place. And hopefully it does as we get into the draft right now. They end up getting Jalen Carter. That might screw us. That might screw us. The Houston Texans take Bryce Young. The Cardinals... Take C.J. Stroud. Okay. Will Levis? All right. Well, 
I guess we have to make another decision. I'm not getting Will Levis. Um, well... I could get Will Levis and trade him to the Colts. But I can also use a left tackle. But we we need a right outside linebacker so bad. We're building the entire offseason specifically to get a right outside linebacker. I might actually just go with Paris Johnson here. Um, I might see if he's worth it to trade to the Colts. But... I don't know. Like, Will Levis, I would draft him just to trade him, you know, to the Colts because they don't have a QB, I don't think, as far as I know. I can probably check right now, but Paris Johnson might be the pick. I cannot believe that the Colts ended up picking the Will Anderson. I'm so discombobulated right now. I am tempted to get Will Levis. I am very tempted to get Will Levis right now and just trade him to... The Colts, because they have Daniel Jones at QB. I don't think they're going to be too excited about that. Will Levis, I could also just get Paris Johnson and see if they'll take him like that. And if they don't, then I have a left tackle. But ah, it's so difficult. I think I'm going to take Paris Johnson. I'm going to draft to what I need right now and then see if they want him. And if they don't, I keep him and worry about the linebacker in another season. But I am going to get Paris Johnson here. He does have hidden development. He is 21 years old. Left tackle does not hurt because that is a position of need right now. I can't take Will Levis and take the easy way out of just like, oh, I'm going to trade Will Levis to the, to the Colts and hope that they take him. So I'm going to take Paris Johnson, try to build the line a little bit. If they want him, they can have him. And now we are at the end of the second round right now. And we're looking for something good. We are looking for something good. We have Will McDonald here. He might have done good at the pro day. He did. He did do very good. We could move him to the other side. And he can actually be our, our outside linebacker that we're looking for right now. I do like his stats and physicals. He does have elite acceleration and jumping. A pursuit is not bad. He's definitely a speed rusher. Yeah, he's definitely a rusher. Will McDonald looks pretty good. I am going to go ahead and take Will McDonald here. I have an idea because our pick is coming up for the third round. Like, it's at the beginning of the third round. So, we're going to take Will McDonald. Mm. Mm. Stevenson. Yeah, Tyreek Stevenson has been picked and i am looking at jordan battle right now if he's not picked already okay yeah i think that is our position of need at the moment and that's who i'm really most interested in because we don't need wide receivers anymore keon white does not look good jordan battle i think he will look pretty good solid across the board skills aren't bad i can hope that he develops 89 acceleration 86 agility 85 jumping 88 speed he's a hybrid strong safety not too we're not doing too hot <laughs> we're not doing too hot right now in this draft where we got unlucky with win wow wow we got unlucky with will anderson going to the colts and now we're just picking up the scraps right now and hoping that these players end up becoming something even with normal development dj turner is here we could try to build the cornerbacks now don't need that don't need a halfback left tackle don't need anymore um over sean not too concerned about i think i'm gonna get dj turner i do like dj turner as an actual prospect and this draft class gets updated pretty frequently round three to four not bad physicals stats aren't as bad either dj turner hidden development okay that's fantastic for us right now 94 speed 88 change of direction 87 agility and 93 acceleration we add to the cornerback room that's a bunch of rentals right now and kind of try to build behind a young core of the chicago bears right now all right well 
after kind of a mediocre draft, if to say the least. Um, this is our team. Paris Johnson is a 74 overall. I gave my try at trying to get Will Anderson, and they did not budge. So, I'm going to have to deal with Paris Johnson right now. Not a bad tackle. He's just a very low overall at the moment. I hope he gets a good development trait, but our offense doesn't look bad. The right tackle is back. Our center needs help, but it's going to have to do for right now. Wide receivers look good. Running back looks good. Hopefully, Justin Fields develops with that offense. Willie McDonald is a 69 overall. Not the best look in the world. Um... Jordan Battle is also a 69 overall, so wasn't a great draft. Was not a great draft. Hopefully, we can have a better one in the next season. But, yeah, I just... We'll have to see how this team does going to the midseason mark. We do have our first-round pick of next year. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to get a second-round pick just yet. But depending on the stats that we see at the midseason mark, that's probably where I'll determine who I'm going to be trading. Well, that's uh, not a great look. We are 2-5 and five at the midseason mark. Not great. Let's go ahead and take a look at what players are ready to negotiate. Marcus Peters, Jalen Johnson, Darna Mooney. Okay. Depending on what Jalen Johnson and Darna Mooney want... 26.4 over five years 11.7 over two wasn't bad it's not horrible i'm gonna have to see how their stats look right now if they're not too crazy then i'll probably just trade them for something and try to get some value out of them but two and five two and five not great not great at all we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the stats of the season we are 24th in offensive yards justin fields looks like he's doing pretty good we are 27th in defensive yards so bottom of the line bottom of the line team 1500 yards 11 touchdowns and five interceptions for justin fields right now rushing tony power looks like he's doing pretty good 434 yards and four touchdowns Khalil herbert is also getting some touchdowns three touchdowns to be specific Receiving, Darnell Mooney is a top. Darnell Mooney is a top with DK getting the majority of the touchdowns right now. 415 and two touchdowns with a 14.3 average. Cole Komet is doing pretty good as well with three touchdowns and 300 yards. And DK with 300 touchdowns and four touch. Whoa. And DK with 300 yards and four touchdowns. <laughs> um, George Pickens... I mean, he's the basically wide receiver three or four right now, so I'm not expecting too much from him. I, I'm considering trading Miko for a second round pick. I know that I signed him in free agency, but I did not think that we're going to be getting DK possibly, so not too confident on that. TFLs, Trayvon Coley, defensive tackle, bridge player, eight TFLs, not bad. Josh Allen has seven TFLs and four sacks. Doing pretty good. Sacks, I'm assuming Josh Allen is at the top. Muhammad is second. So, mm, Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson has three picks. I want to see... And everybody else has one. Perriman, Brisker, and Sante Samuel. But I want to see if our cornerback, supposedly our CB1, is really worth having right now. He does have two deflections, so he is more of a get out, get it out of the way type of thing. Jalen Johnson, Darnell Mooney's also doing good. I think I'm going to re-sign them. I would think that's what would be the situation this upcoming season with the Bears, that they try to keep their young players and keep building around them. I'm going to give him what he wants. This contract right here, I'm excited to sign such a great offer. Neutral. Not trying to make it too complicated on him. A two-year deal for 11.7 for Darnell Mooney here. Hopefully, he takes it. I could find a better team in a free agency that will match his current offer. Well, I guess we'll have to see how good he does for the rest of the season and see if we can re-sign him later on. Cole Komet, 14.3 over four years. No longer-term commitment, no deal. Interesting. 
interesting choice of words not expecting much we can take a look at the mock draft before we sim to the end of the season to see what players are at the top and it is a right end left outside linebacker another right end qb left outside linebacker seems pretty diverse right now we are projected to get the ninth pick and a tight end at that depending on the way that we finish i think we can actually get a right end i don't think our projection for the mock draft is very accurate at the moment but i would like to get a defensive lineman that would help a lot in terms of longevity but i will go ahead and sim to the playoffs see if we make it if not then we have another year to try to develop the team around justin fields four and 13 again <laughs> all right well we finished off the season four and 13 as you can see at the nfc in the nfc north ouch four and 13 i think that's probably the worst record in the league unless somebody really sucked this year oh that's concerning okay well i think that we really should have a good pick in the draft we're four and 13 you can't get much worse than that um there's no other mock drafts right now other than the one that we saw before so we can go ahead and take a look at the stats well first the roster see if anybody got any development traits right now hoping that justin fields did he did not he actually went down because of morale dk metcalf has gone up a bit miko has overtaken darnell mooney and george pickens is now wide receiver three Paris Johnson, for some reason, is behind Jones. I don't understand why. He has a better overall. He's actually been progressing. So the morale is just all around down. It seems like Khalil Herbert likes to lose because his morale is up. But on the defensive side, also not looking great. Also not looking great. Asante Samuel is doing fine right now. Defensive line definitely needs help. Willie McDonald did not develop at all still a lot to work on still a lot to work on after year one jordan battle is just not good don't draft him if you're uh nfl team watching because he's not going to be good according to madden 28th in offensive yards and 14th in defensive so we picked it up on the defensive side justin fields almost got 4,000 yards but his td to interception ratio sucked 21 tds and 19 interceptions is not good tony pollard just got over a thousand yards and seven touchdowns justin fields had 500 rushing yards and three touchdowns more than our backup dk metcalf actually ended up overtaking darno mooney almost getting to a thousand had seven tds not bad darno mooney also had a pretty similar season but had significantly less tds cole Komet, a reliable tight end i want to bring him back Darnell Mooney, I'm not too sure about, but we'll have to see. On the defensive side, seems like somebody showed out. Josh Allen got 17 TFLs and 9 sacks and 1 interception. Wow. All these other players are kind of just because of their positions right now. Justin Jones at a 16 TFLs. Coley with 11. Not too big of a concern for us right now. Josh Allen, of course, we know that he is the leader in sacks. Four, t four interceptions, sorry, for Eddie Jackson. Three interceptions for Denzel Perriman. Three interceptions for Jalen Johnson. And Asante Samuel had two. Not bad. Not bad at all. Perriman had the most tackles. I just think that Justin Fields needs to develop. And I don't know why he doesn't. It is probably the playbook, so I might have to change that up. So I will most likely do that before the start of next season, but we can go ahead and sim. All right. And at the end of, oh, wow. Will Levis actually did good. At the end of the 2023 season, the Kansas City Chiefs beat the 49ers. Legereus Sneed, the cornerback, ends up winning Super Bowl MVP. A lot of familiar names, but Will Levis won the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Should have possibly gotten him, but the Bucks getting him would be an interesting outcome in real life. I don't think Will Levis gets out of the top five. It seems like he's very highly sought after 
in this draft. So we will have to see about that. We do have some players to talk about re-signing with, and that includes Darnell Mooney and Cole Komet. I'm definitely focusing on, well, I have to get the kicker first, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, never mind. He doesn't want to come back. Well, I will try to get him in free agency. Oh, 5.6 for one year. That's like the same as what he was asking for. Yeah. I don't I don't think I'm going to franchise tag Darnell Moody, even if he declines. Um, He wants a longer term commitment than what we offered him before. Okay, well, Darnell Mooney just doesn't want to re-sign with us. We gave him a good offer. We did give him a good offer, but he just doesn't want to re-sign with us. I guess that's understandable. I'm not giving him 29.3 mil. Nope. Um, Cole Komet won wanted a longer-term commitment. Okay, cool. So we get Cole Komet back. I think he will be able to develop in our playbook and scheme right now. I mean, if I'm not going to use my franchise tag on anybody, I would use it on the kicker right now just to make sure that I have one. That would be great. I am going to go ahead and franchise tag the kicker. We're going to keep him right now. Definitely was not going to franchise tag Darnell Mooney, but now we can go ahead and see who we can get in free agency and hope that there's some big players that want to come to Chicago. All right, some big hitters. Some big hitters right now that we're going after. Nick Bosa. We are in a tight competition with the Kansas City Chiefs right now. And I'm hoping that we beat him in that because Nick Bosa getting added to this young team would be great just so he could really develop in the defense. And then Justin Fields handles the offense. Having a good defense definitely complements the offense and gives them more confidence. A right guard. We do have a right guard right now, but having a better one like a 92 overall 27 year old we have a pretty far lead against all the other teams logan wilson i think could be an outcome at right outside linebacker just because we missed out on way anderson we have to do something about that outside linebacker position logan wilson could get a bag from the chicago bears with that Derek brown defensive tackle somebody that we need a lot of defensive positions right now because jordan brooks is also another player that i'm going after and a lot more longer term commitment in this one for sure but i think it's worth the longer term commitment there is lamar jackson right now and justin herbert but i really am looking for justin fields to develop i think he is the future of the chicago bears so i'm hoping that he continues to develop and gets more development traits yes okay okay wow all right so we did end up getting Nick Bosa, Lindstrom, and Wilson. The three positions that I really wanted were just waiting on these two to decide. I think we're still going to get them. I might just evaluate them right now. AJ Terrell is kind of tempting just because Jalen Johnson's not great. Asante Samuel, he could develop. DJ Turner might not develop. Having a, a certified CB1 could help a lot. I'm going to give him a contract, see if he accepts it. If he doesn't, then got to roll with that. But we are in close competition with the Broncos once again, as we are with Derek Brown. I'm going to go ahead and just do it right now, just to make it easy on all of us. Um, none of them accepted our offer. That is fantastic. AJ Terrell went to the Broncos. Derek Brown went to the Broncos. And Jordan Brooks went to the Panthers. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Love that so much. That helps me tremendously right now. All right. Well, looks like I'm looking for another middle linebacker. I do like the signings that we made. I do want to keep the money. I do want to keep the money because I think Justin Fields' contract is about to come up. And I need to save money in case that happens. In this mock draft now, they have still a QB going at one. We can go ahead and take a look at Von Wheaton. Since the pro day has passed, he did do well. He did do well there. We haven't got much else, but I do like Von Wheaton a lot. We could use a right end for sure. I think that that's going to be our pick in this draft. 
Um, I'm thinking about trading somebody for a second round pick because I do want a second round pick. And hopefully we can do some good things in the draft. But I think I'm going to keep my cap space at where it is right now. All right, we are sending Khalil Herbert in a sixth round pick to the Lions for their second round pick. It's an early second round pick, so it's almost like a late first round. Don't really need Khalil Herbert. He does have star development now, so I use that to my advantage. And his contract is coming up, so had to use him for some value right now. And I think we have a lot of positions to look at in this draft. I'm going to try to sign a defensive tackle, and you'll see if I do sign him. Or if I don't, then you will just see the draft. Now we get into the 2024 NFL draft and the Saints are on the clock. We will see. I'm hoping they take their quarterback here. Steven Barker, Stefan Barker, however you want to say it, gets picked at the quarterback position. And I think we are going to go ahead and take Von Wheaton at this pick right here. He seems pretty good. He's a little far down, but I did like him and his stats and situation, but okay, where is Von Wheaton? There he is. He looks pretty good. I do have some good feeling about him. An A tackle, B finesse move, C play recognition, B awareness, D block shedding. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and take Von Wheaton here. I have faith that he's going to be a pretty good right end. We need a right end pretty badly, or left end in general. He looks good. He looks good. He's not top five projected, but all the top five projected just don't look that great. I'm hoping that he's really good, and he's not. Normal development, 85 strength, 85 jumping, 91 acceleration. I honestly was very impressed by his stats but i guess i just didn't hit on my second pick of the draft we are gonna go ahead and go with another position of need Tavon bullard looks pretty good his projections look like they will be pretty good as well good physical is a power rusher left end at the opposite side of von wheaton hoping that he's good and also normal development these players could have high overalls and they just don't have hidden development, but we've seen how fast the hidden development players can lose their abilities and how fast normal development players can get star, but really just relying on trying to get these positions of need and hoping for the best at this point. And at the start of season two of the Bears rebuild, this is how our offensive looks right now. Paris Johnson... Going up in overalls, I like that a lot. Our center was not a great pick whatsoever. He was for the first overall center in the draft, so I had assumed that he was going to be pretty good. But Tony Pollard has gone up a few overalls. DK Metcalf went down to superstar. That's not great. We're looking for Justin Fields to go up to superstar this year. Our defense looks good. Looks a little better than it did before with Nick Bosa there. Von Wheaton is on the other side of Nick Bosa right now. We do have Bullard playing behind Nick Bosa. Um, I actually did not even realize, or I actually forgot that we had Bosa. But Logan Wilson is a right outside linebacker. Middle linebackers, Perriman looks good. Sanborn. It's just, it's a difficult situation right now, but I think the more the years go by, the more chances we have to really build around this team. And I'm looking to trade some backups right now, like Taylor Jenkins. Taylor Jenkins is somebody that I'm looking to trade at the moment. Possibly actually changing Lindstrom's position to center would be a better idea. I think I'm going to do that just to be able to keep a good line going. I would like to have Lindstrom at the center position. We will go ahead and sim to the midseason mark, hoping for a different season compared to last seasons. <laughs> All right, so not a bad start to our second season. Four and three on that pace. We could have a winning season. Definitely could. It looks like our offense 
did develop a good bit. Hopefully, Justin Fields did. He did just a little bit, but not as much as I was assuming he was going to. George Pickens has gone up. DK Metcalf has also gone up, but he's still not a superstar X Factor right now. Um, morale is overall just not good on the team. We're in 85 overall, though. Von Wheaton has developed just a little bit. Um, I actually did not see this. I sim past like the 6th and 7th round, and I guess our computer was able to find a hidden development player. So I will put him at the starting defensive tackle. But other than that, I mean, we're 4-3 and three right now. I don't have much to complain about in terms of the team. We have an 87 overall offense and 84 overall defense. I think the offensive line is really helping Justin Fields out right now. We can see right now before we get into the stats who is up for a contract. Eddie Jackson. Mm. And some of our young players. I don't think this is going to be a season of uh, of trying to get new players in free agency. Ooh, but Eddie Jackson is 30 years old. That's concerning. That is most definitely concerning. I want to sign him, but not with the intention to keep him through his whole contract. So I will go ahead and re-sign him. This offer is perfect. Can't wait till next year. All right, so we have a free safety back. Not going to sign Terrence Steele. We have 20 mil in cap for this upcoming offseason. Ah, well, not what I really wanted, but we will go ahead and look at the stats. We are 23rd in offensive yards. Justin Fields, I hope he's doing a little better. 26 in defensive yards. Not great. Justin Fields, well, he has a 2-1 to one ratio on his uh, TD interceptions. 1,600 yards. Not horrible. Not horrible. Tony Pollard is doing what Tony Pollard does. He averages 63 yards per game. I thought that was his long or average long. Um, six TDs, 441 yards. It's not horrible. I just wish it could be better. DK has not really done much for us compared to George Pickens. George Pickens seems to be outshining DK right now. 480 yards and six touchdowns while DK has 424 and three touchdowns. Not fantastic. Logan Wilson has been the biggest contributor, it seems. Other than our rookie Bullard, nine TFLs. Josh Allen has eight. Nick Bosa has seven. All the pickups that we got in the offseason seem to be doing good. Nick Bosa has nine sacks on the season. 5.5 for Josh Allen, 4.5 for Von Wheaton. Um... I thought we had no interceptions. Jalen Johnson, who we re-signed in the offseason, has two interceptions. DJ Turner, one of our young players, has one interception. So it's not horrible right now. But it is kind of how the Bears are already doing right now. I was hoping that Justin Fields would kind of develop a little more. But we will have to see how the rest of the season goes. We'll go ahead and simulate to the playoffs Hoping to make it to the playoffs and Justin Fields maybe to get a development upgrade. Ah, uh, well, we did not finish off the season great. We went 7-10, and 10, so that means we went 3-7 and seven for the rest of the season after the midseason mark. Not great. Not great at all. Go ahead and take a look, quick look at the roster. Justin Fields. Hardly developed. Tony Pollard develop more tony pollard seems to just be benefiting a lot so is george pickens and dk i'm assuming dk is going to get back to superstar x factor at some point they moved nick bosa to the right end position and started bullard interesting choice von wheaton i thought was doing good but i guess bullard is doing better right now logan wilson josh allen a lot of the same right now we can go ahead and look at the stats 30th and offensive yards that is not great and 18th and defensive i would assume so 4,000 yards 20 touchdowns and 12 picks and 60 percent completion rate for justin fields not great a thousand yards for tony pollard and 14 touchdowns wow justin fields almost had 504 touchdowns this season receiving george pickens showing out DK Metcalf kind of falling off 
a little bit right now. George Pickens, though, 1,097 yards and 10 touchdowns. Everybody else kind of had the same stats. You guys can see it right there. Defense, TFLs, 22 TFLs for Tavon Bullard. That's insane. Nick Bosa had 14 TFLs. Von Wheaton had 14 TFLs. And Josh Allen had 13. Nick Bosa seemed to have a DPOI type of year. 20.5 sacks on the season. Von Wheaton had 13.5 sacks. Josh Allen had 12. That's impressive. A lot of players, except for Eddie Jackson and Jalen Johnson, got picks. I'm not too sure about Asante Samuel. I'm not too sure if I want to try to re-sign him in free agency. I'm not really planning on it. He is 5'10". We traded somebody that we didn't really need in David Montgomery, I think it was. Um, he's been okay right now, meaning Asante Samuel, but he just hasn't been as good as I thought he was going to be. We're an 88 overall right now, so hopefully... Hopefully this next season is the one that Justin Fields kind of pops off, but we were seven and ten, so I think we may be kind of at the mid draft area. So we can go ahead and see who won the awards this offseason. Nick Bosa did not win DPOI. I don't like that very much. Von Wheaton did win Defensive Rookie of the Year, though, so that is impressive. The Bengals beat the Dallas Cowboys in what seems to be one of the best offensive games in Super Bowl history. 53 to 49. Not a very good defensive game, but it looks like the offenses were doing pretty well. Joe Burrow won Super Bowl MVP and NFL MVP. Impressive. Very impressive. I'm hoping that Justin Fields can do the same in these coming years right now. So at the end of day one of free agency in our third season, or third free agency to be specific, Tyson Campbell is somebody that I'm going after. I still do want a better cornerback than our CB1 right now. I am also trying to reunite the St. Brown brothers. There has been some rumors about it, but the Lions, that's their number one receiver. So it could happen in the future, whether it's the St. Brown that's on the Chicago Bears. I'm blanking on his name right now. Going to the Lions or Monroe coming to Chicago. They have Justin Fields in Chicago, so... Evan McPherson is a kicker. Cairo Santos is getting old. Um, did not know that he was turning 33. So he his contract's going to be up by next year. White hair only because there's no left guards in this draft that are really standing out at me. And if they are, then it's probably going to have to be a backup for him for this next season. Um, but other than that, we don't have much salary cap space after that. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the next day of free agency and hope that we get some of these players all right so after day one we did end up getting tyson campbell evan mcpherson and cody whitehair there has been some more or one more offer made to monra st brown i will try to get him but if i'm not able to get him i'm also not too upset because we do have some solid wide receivers i would just like to get a little more better on the offensive side in terms of the talent positions um but other than that i don't think we need any more cornerbacks yeah we're pretty good at cornerback i think overall we're doing pretty good all right we are now in the nfl draft i don't think i'm gonna trade up i don't think it's worth it we'll go pick by pick right now since we are a top pick in the draft i thought we were the sixth pick brian cook does go to the vikings they need a quarterback that's for sure amir stockton goes to the commanders damian parks does go to the saints so i will go ahead and sim past these and just get to our pick right now loney dobbins gets picked right before us we might just use this pick as a trade bait i guess i'm just not crazy on these other prospects in the first round Byron Benedict looks pretty good. He does look pretty good. I am going to go ahead and get Byron Benedict. A good defensive tackle right now would help a lot. He does have hidden development. 93 strength, 86 acceleration, 75 speed. Don't expect that from a defensive tackle. Not everybody's Jordan Davis, you know. Um, 
I think he's going to fare pretty well. He has hidden development. He should be a high overall since he is supposed he is projected in the first round as we got him in the first round. But now we go to the second round. And I'm looking for a right tackle right now because we did not end up signing any of the right tackles. I'm still trying to think of the future in terms of Justin Fields' contract. I think it's actually coming up this next season, if I'm not mistaken. But here we are at the second round pick. Now, I think I'm going to get Derek Burgess. Free safety. Eddie Jackson's only getting older. I need to find somebody to take his role as he does have hidden development. So that helps us a lot. 90 speed, 85 jumping, 88 agility, 89 acceleration. Pretty good. Not bad. Almost the same height as Eddie Jackson, so he can just fill in that role very easily. But now we do have to look at right tackle in the third round, and that's my main focus right now. All right. Well, at the start of season three of the rebuild, DK Metcalf is no longer a superstar, which kind of concerns me just a little bit just a little bit 27 years old if i see him start regressing it's up i'm getting rid of him um justin Fields still has yet to do anything we have a solid offense around him i don't see why he would not be developing benedict was a good choice von wheaton up to superstar very impressive very impressive over the offseason too i was not expecting that Burgess is going to be behind Eddie Jackson. As I said, he will develop behind him. Middle linebacker is really the only situation right now that needs help. But there is simply just no middle linebackers in these auto-generated drafts. So it only makes it harder. But I like our defense right now. I think it can save us on the offensive side because the offense does not look great. But the defense looks fantastic. We changed the defensive scheme just because we have this young player right here. I think he's going to develop still, even though he lost his hidden development trait. Um, I'm expecting Benedict to be the main contributor, but Johnson over here, Dalton Johnson to be specific. Oh, uh, that doesn't match him. He is definitely black in his profile pick. And that man is Latino. Um, you know what? I'm going to just keep it pushing. I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the mid-season mark. White hair is back to being a normal development. Okay. Yep. Mid-season mark. I will see you all there. All right, and at the midseason mark, we are 5-2, and two, and it seems like we have a breakout wide receiver. We can go ahead and take a quick look at that before we get into it. Can't see the name. Keep throwing it my way. I truly believe that I have the potential to do so. George Pickens. Very interesting. George Pickens is about to overtake DK Metcalf, it seems. But right now, our roster looks light hopefully justin fields is better still a 78 he is still a 78 and that is concerning dk metcalf is still a 94 tony pollard is still a 90 george pickens is a 83 hmm that's concerning well our defense looks pretty good i think that's what's keeping us in the race right now Ooh. Eddie Jackson is on the decline. I might have to get rid of him. I might have to get rid of him. Probably this offseason. We're 5-2 and two right now. I don't want to change up anything and just mess it up for the rest of the team. I think the change of scheme definitely helped with our second middle linebacker not having to do anything. Um, Von Wheaton is doing great, probably. Benedict. We will go ahead and check out the stats right now just to make sure that we are correct on our statements. And hope that our defense is really what's keeping us in the season right now at 5-2. and two. We are 10th in offensive yards, actually. Not bad. 15th in defensive. We are doing pretty good as a team. 1,800 yards. And Justin Fields is not making bad decisions. 15 TDs and 4 interceptions. I think that's about like a 3-1 to one ratio in terms of TDs and interceptions. Tony Pollard has 512 yards on the season and 8 touchdowns. Uh, receiving... George Pickens is doing better than DK, 543 and four touchdowns. 
and DK has 462 and five touchdowns. So kind of second guessing DK right now, but I'm not going to mess up the team right now. The rookie has seven TFLs on the season. Nick Bosa has five and Josh Allen has four QB sacks. Nick Bosa has 6.5 sacks. Josh Allen has four and Bullard has 2.5 while the rookie has two sacks. And the interceptions aren't too crazy. Campbell has gotten an interception, and so has Logan Wilson and Jalen Johnson. Overall, the team looks pretty good. It does look pretty good. We just need to keep this pace so we can make the playoffs and make a push for that Super Bowl with the team that we have right now. Before we get to the end of the season, we will go ahead and look at this mock draft. It seems very linebacker heavy, outside linebacker to be specific, and we don't need that. So, might be something of a trade type of... They have us taking a right tackle, which I would not mind, because we do need a right tackle pretty badly. Uh, halfback is not a concern right now. I think the right tackle is probably the way to go in this draft. It also seems like it's pretty deep in that department as well. So, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to get that in the draft, but I'm more focused on us finishing off the season well after being 5-2 and two right now. So I'm going to attempt to sign these players back right now. And if they don't do good, they will get traded. I can guarantee that. But Justin Fields, I hope he accepts this. That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done. Okay, we got our quarterback back. Now DK is our next order of business. Happy to sign and continue to play for this organization. Not really trying to get Miko back. I'm not um george pickens though i do like george three years this offer is perfect okay he is about to get a breakout so i wanted to get him back brisker i'm interested in for sure bringing back so i will go ahead and simulate to the playoffs and hopefully we are in the playoffs since we are five and two at the midseason mark i'm looking forward to trying to be there the end of the season we are in the wild card game 11 and 6 finished off pretty well we did finish off pretty well we finished off 6 and 4 if I'm not mistaken if my math is correct but we will take a look a quick look at the roster hopefully George Pickens did get that development upgrade maybe he did not but he is an 86 overall DK Metcalf is still a 94 Miko is an 83. I'm glad I did not mess up the roster too much. Cole Komet is looking good as well. Defense still looking good. Um, Perriman is not going to be here next year, so I'm glad about that because he just keeps regressing. Burgess is definitely going to have to take over Eddie Jackson's place this offseason as I probably trade Eddie Jackson for a first-round pick or another good player. But our defensive line looks pretty good right now. Brisker looks pretty good at our strong safety position, but uh, overall, we look like a good team. We look like we could definitely make a push right now. Um, Justin Fields has yet has yet to make any sort of development increase, which I'm pleasantly surprised about. 16th in offensive yards, did not mean pleasantly. 8th in defensive yards. So it is our defense that are, that's doing most of the work. 4,400 yards. 34 touchdowns and 14 interceptions by Justin Fields. He's getting progressively better, which is a good thing. Tony Pollard has almost 1,200 yards and 14 TDs. Justin Fields continues to almost get 500 yards in every season with five TDs. Not bad at all. George Pickens is slowly taking over as wide receiver one on our team. 1,300 yards and 10 TDs while DK did not get to 1,000 and had nine TDs. I don't think I can trade him though. I don't think I can trade DK. Logan Wilson is at the top of our chart because he has the most sack, most tackles. My apologies. Byron Benedict, 20 TFLs and six sacks. That is impressive. Nick Bosa had 17 TFLs and 14 and a half sacks. Bullard did pretty well. So did Josh Allen. I'm trying to see. Nobody else really showed out. Von Wheaton did pretty well. He kept his superstar development, so I'm assuming that he did pretty well. And yeah, interceptions. Derek Burgess, 
with the A catching, had four interceptions. Kyler Gordon had three. Brisker had two. Logan Wilson had one. And a bunch of other players had one. I would not go into that. But we do have a playoff game to get into against the Washington Commanders. Might be a good matchup because their defense is pretty good. So it might stop our offense a good bit. But we will go ahead and get into the game and hopefully we can come out on top in this playoffs. All right. And here we are at the kickoff. Washington Commanders are getting stopped right now and they turn the ball over. And now the Chicago Bears have the ball. They are not going downfield because they got a penalty. Almost get into field goal range. They do make it with Evan McPherson making it. 3-0, the Commanders go downfield and also get a field goal, but the Bears are not able to answer back as they get a turnover and get another field goal. It is 6-3 with no touchdowns just yet. Looks like the Commanders got a turnover at the goal line as they go downfield and get a touchdown. Hopefully, the Chicago Bears might be able to get a touchdown before the half, and they do. They make it 13-10 before the halftime and the bears have the ball in the third quarter fourth and 18 seems like they have to turn it over and the commanders go downfield and get another touchdown 17 to 13 we're hoping for the chicago bears to get downfield as a 25 yard reception for cole Komet happens and they're slowly going down first and goal seven yard rush by justin fields two yard rush by justin fields and they get a touchdown with george pickens getting the catch as they make the PAT, the Commanders have the ball once again, and it seems like I thought we stopped them for a second, but they make the field goal, tie up the game, and the Bears have the ball, and it is fourth and five, and they're going to have to punt it. The Commanders have the ball once again and get stopped too. The defenses are showing up right now as the Bears slowly get downfield and get a 27-yard reception by Miko Hardman and then get a 20-yard touchdown by Miko Hardman. I am glad I did not trade him or get rid of him because we would not have this moment right now. Three minutes and 24 seconds left in the quarter, and the Commanders have the ball, and they are slowly going downfield as they get into the red zone, get knocked out of the red zone by a penalty, and almost get a touchdown. They get another penalty by Brian Robinson. Second and goal, a five-yard reception by Terry McLaurin. Third and goal, fourth and goal, and they end up getting a touchdown with Jahan Dotson getting the four-yard touchdown pass. Tie game. Justin Fields needs to show that he is the quarterback of the future for the Chicago Bears as DK Metcalf gets a 14-yard reception. George Pickens gets a 12-yard reception. Nine-yard reception by Miko. A rush by tony pollard another rush by tony pollard third and five fourth and two i think they're gonna go ahead and go with the field goal here hopefully evan mcpherson can make it and he does 30 to 27 with 22 seconds left on the clock and they get a big gain to start that drive for the washington commanders they get stopped on the second one but they they might have gotten into field goal range, but I think they missed the field goal. 30 to 27 is how this game ends, and the Bears are moving on to the next round of the playoffs. Here we are about to face the Carolina Panthers in the divisional round. Hopefully, we can keep this going. Keep the momentum going, really. We had a pretty good game against the Washington Commanders. A damn good defense. Damn good defense, and the Panthers are not as good as a defense so i'm looking forward to this matchup a little more just because i don't think that they can hold us all right and here we are with the carolina panthers starting off with the ball they end up punting it away and the bears go downfield and get the first touchdown of the day panthers pen punt it away once again the bears lose a lot of yardage close to the end of their drive and the panthers just simply cannot do anything against us but we also cannot they are getting downfield and they turn the ball over back to us and we go downfield and might only get a field goal on this Ooh, justin fields got sacked twice but we did make the field goal with evan mcpherson the panthers get a large gain go downfield 
and end up getting a field goal we got a timeout just to try to save some time on the clock to try to get downfield but it's fourth and seven and i think we're gonna have to punt it away and we do they get to about the 26 yard line the carolina panthers get sacked and have to kick it back off to us in the second half at his as it is 10 to 3 at halftime. I am jumbling my words because I am focused on the game right now. And we get a touchdown 17 to 3. They get a very long run and end up getting within seven. They kick it back off to us. We end up on third and 10, fourth and five. We have to punt it away, and they are within the five yard line right now. Hopefully we can stop them down here and we end up doing that and they have to punt it back to us and the Bears go downfield and maybe get a they do get a touchdown that might be the game winner there 24 to 10 the Panthers are going downfield but they can't do it completely and we end up getting another touchdown and that just might be the dagger as the Panthers get another touchdown but we chew the clock and finish off the game and we are going to the nfc conference championship as matt rule is still the coach and now we are here against the new york giants we are keeping the momentum going right now we are also facing a decent defense but i think we can still hold our own against them 85 overall team against an 84 overall team i'm looking forward to this matchup with their saquon barkley running back in the backfield and now we are here at MetLife Stadium and the Giants start off with the ball and end up turning the ball over to us and hopefully we can go downfield and get a touchdown and we do end up getting a touchdown 7-0 to the Giants have the ball once again and they end up punting the ball away back to us we get we get the ball back we end up having a large game by Miko Hardman. He has been showing up for our team right now. Fourth and seven, we end up only getting a field goal, 10 to zero. The Giants have the ball. They keep getting large passing gains, and that is not looking good for us. First and goal, they end up getting a touchdown, making it a three-point game, 10 to seven, and the Bears just simply cannot do anything with this Giants defense, absolutely locking them down. The Giants are getting short gains, but they're getting enough an interception by Logan Wilson for 17 yards. That's going to help us a lot. Hopefully, Evan McPherson, can you make this? He, oh, we punt it, and it's a touchback. Oh, no. Okay. We are stopping them right now. Fourth and eight, Nick Bosa shows up and gets us that ball back. We're in the 35 we get a big passing gain, another big passing gain. We're in the red zone, and we slowly get into territory as George Pickens gets the touchdown for us. 17-7 to right before the half. Hopefully, we can stop them before they're in field goal range. It doesn't seem like we can. 14 seconds left on the clock, and they end up getting the field goal. 17-10. to we need to score now since we ended up choking that, but we cannot score. We get sacked twice by the Giants defense. Second and 14, third and 12, first and 10 with a big gain by Jerry Lehman on the Giants. And they're slowly going downfield very periodically, and they end up getting the touchdown to tie the game. 17-17, the Bears have to go downfield and do something with this as a 52-yard rush by Tony Pollard for the touchdown makes it a touchdown lead the giants are now going downfield once again they're getting tiny rushes fourth and 11 mac jones gets sacked mac jones is on the giants he gets sacked by our young player our young breakout player right now fourth and one do we go for it we do not we punt it away back to the giants 24 to 17 in the fourth quarter we have to hold him away from being a touchdown and we cannot do that we have to get some sort of score and hopefully chew the clock as it seems like we're able to first and ten second and five first and ten again we are slowly getting into the red zone fourth and four a minute 21 i'm assuming we're going for the field goal and we are 27 to 24 the giants have the ball now they get a big reception on the first play jerry layman is having an insane game 
And it seems like he's just going to continue having that as they get the touchdown with 30 seconds left on the clock. Oh, boy. That's not too good for us. Oh, but we get a 14-yard reception by George Pickens. I saw that. First and 20. Did we get a penalty? All right. We're slowly getting into field goal range. Nine seconds on the clock. Fourth and 10. I'm going to jump into the game. I'm going to get my first shot at this. I don't really trust the computer right now. We have nine seconds on the clock to do something with this. I'm going to end up running this play right here. I'm looking for DK to get open on this. Justin Fields, I need you to throw that ball on the dot. DK is in single coverage. And DK is going downfield. And he is not able to to get that ball I had to throw a jump ball I think I had no other choice there QB Neal we're just gonna have to go into next season and hope that we are able to bring back most of our players and make another push for the Super Bowl but we get stopped in the NFC Conference Championship we just have to hope that we get the right pieces in this offseason. All right. And at the end of the 2025 season, unfortunately, we did not make it. But the people that we faced did end up winning the Super Bowl. And that just makes you feel a little bit better. Just because, you know, we lost. Adore Jackson wins Super Bowl MVP. Very interesting. Nobody on our team won any awards this season. But I'm excited for upcoming seasons, though. I am excited for upcoming seasons as we go into the re-signing period. We have $32 million in cap. We have a lot of decisions to make in terms of who to bring back, what to do with certain players, and who we want to bring in, um, whether it's a draft or just free agency. But I think this is the time where we saw that we can make it to the NFC Conference Championship, and we kind of make that extra push to get a player that can really put us over the edge. All right, so we get Miko back. He was a big benefactor in the playoffs for us. 23 mil. I really like the team that we had in terms of how developed they were getting. Um, this left tackle ended up doing pretty good. He's asking for a little too much. But Brisker, I think I'm going to bring him back. Actually, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and see who's in this free agency i have to keep in mind kyler gordon brisker braxton jones all right so right now we're just attempting to bring all of our players back that we already had we will worry about the the free agency class in this one is a bunch of halfbacks we already have tony pollard we're not very concerned about these guys also because they are the same overall and age than him also tony pollard is actually younger and a better overall i would want to get jalen thompson but he's 28, so he's going to be regressing pretty soon. It's just too many risk in this one. Um, might go after Leighton Vanderush. So we only ended up getting that left tackle back and the cornerback. It gives. I, I guess we get to save some cap space. It's just Jordan Battle is now in the starting role of strong safety, so I guess he'll be able to develop a bit more. Leighton Vanderush ended up going to the Bucks. Very interesting. Um, doesn't help us much. I don't think there's any other good. Mm. All right. So we ended up sending out Eddie Jackson and a fourth and a six for a second round pick in this year's draft. Looking. Looking for something good. They're saying our team needs is a QB. That's kind of crazy. I was going to try to trade Eddie Jackson for um, Fred Warner, but I don't want to get that unrealistic. We will go ahead and get into this draft. Now, it's a lot of young players at the helm of this team right now. We have Burgess, who is at free safety right now. Jordan Battle is now the starting strong safety. I think he's going to do well in that starting position. I think our defense is still going to be fine the way that it is. Um, The offense, Tony Pollard continues to get better. So does George Pickens. DK Morrow still has him at a 94 O-line is still looking pretty good. I would like a left guard, maybe. Um, Jones has been doing pretty good at right tackle. So, left guard is really the top priority right now. 
Um, hopefully, I can find one at the end of the first round, but we will go ahead and get into the NFL draft. Mm, all right. And at the 29th pick of the first round, we will be looking at, oh, Henry Stern is here at right tackle, though. Ooh, that'll be a tough. Mm. And the left guard does not look good, and I'm not reaching that far. Um, I did like this right tackle. I did like him. He looks pretty good. He looks pretty good. B run block power. So he's very, he's a power blocker. Yeah, definitely a power blocker. 6'6", 340. Henry Stern at the late draft spot. Normal development. Okay, well, we'll see if he ends up having a higher overall than our current right tackle right now. But it all depends on that. I'm going to go ahead and try to get this left tackle here. Wyatt Lynch. He looks pretty good. I mean, elite speed on a lineman doesn't really matter as much. But run block finesse is an A, and we have Tony Pollard in the backfield. I would hope that he's going to be good. Hidden development in the second round. I do like that. Some pretty good stats. Hopefully, he pans out pretty well at that left tackle position. Probably going to play right tackle more. And on opening day, our roster looks a little like this. We did end up getting a right guard. I accidentally sim past one of my picks. Um, no big deal, though. It seems like the computer picked a right guard, and he had hidden development. So I'm looking forward to him possibly prospering in this offense. I guess Justin Fields got knocked down three overalls because he was definitely an 81 in the offseason. So that's a bit concerning. Oh, look at that. Just... Everything in staff week just decided to go down. All right. Well, we will have to see how that works out. Hopefully, hopefully we can make another push this year. Jordan Battle has to show up. Our defense in general just has to show up. And I'm hoping that we're able to make another push for the playoffs. But we will have to see at the midseason mark and hope for the best right now. Not doing too bad at the midseason mark. Four and three. We have trade offers for Kyler Gordon. Um, unless it's like some insanely better cornerback or something, I don't think I'm going to take it. And I'm not. So, four and three at the midseason mark. That could go either way. That could go to our benefit or it could go really badly. Um, mock draft right now. Linebackers once again. Some linemen, there is a middle linebacker that's projected to go high. Um, they have us at the middle taking a QB, which I, to be honest, I might just do at this point. Justin Fields has not been performing. Ben Fowler does look good as a QB, he is an improviser. Um, it just depends on how he does at the combine and pro day. But I think over the season, we're gonna see a little more about him. Um, yeah, I. Unless I see that Justin Fields has like superstar right now, he might just be not only on the move, but being replaced this offseason. I mean, he still is a star, and that's very concerning. That is very concerning. I'm going to move this Rucker guy to left guard or starting left guard. 79 overall still justin fields is still a 79 that is not good that is not good at all our defense burgess has been getting better in the starting role but jordan battle has not he has not been performing at all <sighs> who do we have to resign and how can i trade them because <laughs> i might have to trade for a strong safety right now all right so we get jeremy chin for three of the players that are up for a contract that I'm not really willing to just let walk, I would say, or re-sign, to be honest with you. So, strong safety in Jeremy Chin is now in order. Um, I have to see what other spots we need to fill on the team, but I did trade away Jalen Jones, who I got in the first draft that we did. Our line is still here. I like Jeremy Chin. I like Jeremy Chin. Defensive tackle looks still fine at the moment. Um, all right. So we're sending McDonald a fourth and a fifth of this year for Jer Jerome Baker. Wow. 
Jerome Baker, middle linebacker, somebody that we can get back, I would say. Um, I don't think his contract is up necessarily. Um, Zach Cunningham's contract is going to be up, though. So that is what I was trying to fix in a way. Now we have two middle linebackers. Um, we're negative 5.6 mil in cap. So might have to make some moves or just make the Super Bowl this season. That would also work, you know. But I will go ahead and check out the stats right now on the season. 23rd in offensive yards. Not fantastic. Defensive yards is pretty good. Um, Justin Fields has not thrown a lot of picks at the midseason. Mark, 1,500, 14 touchdowns, and three interceptions. Tony Pollard is not on the same pace that he usually is, but he has five touchdowns and 387 yards. Receiving Cole Komet at the top. Very interesting. A lot of 300s across the board. Hopefully that picks up. Defense, Jerome Baker. I mean, he wasn't on our team doing it, but it's a good pickup, I would say. He has three TFLs and half a sack. Josh Allen has been doing good. Nick Bosa has also been doing good. <laughs> he doesn't have as many TFLs as usual, but he has eight sacks. How old is he? 28. He's still 99 overall, though. So we're pushing for the playoffs this year. I'm really hoping that we do get into the playoffs because if we don't, we have a big situation to handle in terms of the offensive line. Oh, wow. Okay. We blew out the Patriots in the last week of the season. But here we are, 13 and 4, and it seems like we actually won the conference. We won the NFC, so we get the bye of the first round we do win the conference so that means that we have a bunch of upgrades i think we should have nope we don't um but we can take a look at the team before we get into the playoffs and get on a roll right now all we have to do is win two games to get to the super bowl and that's all the team has to think about right now but i'm hoping that justin fields has developed he has well no he's an 80 but 83 with morale so this might be our last season with this o-line so we really have to make a push we really do have to make a push for that super bowl defense looks good the defense looks good we have jerome baker we have jeremy chin i think we're bound for a super bowl right now i think this is the only season that we can really do it unless this is probably going to turn into a 10-year rebuild and i am not planning for that to happen all right and we are facing the 49ers in the divisional round it I think it's going to be a good game. I do think it's going to be a good game. San Francisco versus Chicago. But we're at Soldier Field, so we are at home. All right, and in Soldier Field, in divisional round, we start off with the ball. We're progressively going downfield. It seems like we just might get a touchdown to start off the game, but we only get a field goal. The 49ers start off hot, but they end up punting it away back to us, and we end up getting a big gain and a big touchdown. 10-0, to the 49ers punt it right back to us, and we punt it right back to them. They might answer back right now, and they do. It is 10-7. to We are only up by three, and we are somehow sticking into the game with a George Pickens TD, and our left guard gets injured. I don't know how that happens because injuries are off. The 49ers get two big gains. They get knocked back a little bit and go for the field goal. It is 17-10, and the Bears are going downfield and get stopped in the red zone and have to settle for a field goal only up by 10 20 to 10 and the 49ers end up punting it back with 30 seconds left on the clock and we just might be able to get into field goal range with these big conversions that we're getting right now just might even get nope we stick with the field goal 23 to 10 we are up by 13 points at the half the 49ers start off with the ball though they get two big losses and have to punt it away right back to us and we throw an interception at the goal line the defense just stopped them from in first and goal range from getting a touchdown and settle for a field goal 23 to 13 the defense really has to show up and they are we get an interception and we get another touchdown. It is 30 to 13. That just might be the end of that. But it's still the third quarter. So anything is possible here. 
Another field goal. We are up by 20 points. The 49ers are slowly going downfield, but they end up turning the ball over, and the Bears are getting another touchdown. They're making this game unreachable, but we've seen Tom Brady do more. 40 to 20, and we win the divisional round against the San Francisco 49ers. Wow, that was fast. 40 to 20. Not, not a bad game. Not a bad game at all. We hope to keep this momentum going into the conference championship and onto the Super Bowl, hopefully. All right. It is a rematch in the NFC Championship against the New York Giants. We have to come out on top this time. There's no other choice right now. All right. And at Soldier Field, the Giants start off with the ball and simply... Ooh, they almost got to first down, but they have to punt it away. It is too early in the game to risk it. And we're getting some big big gains right now as we only get a field goal when we're in the red zone. The Giants are getting downfield. We have to hold them to a field goal in order to keep this going, and we do. 3-3. Three to three. We're going downfield pretty quickly right now. We're doing good, and we get a touchdown. 10-3. to three. It is a touchdown lead. And they get sacked twice by us. Third and 27, fourth and 30. They have to punt it back to us. But we also got sacked a couple times. We punted it all the way to the 10-yard line, though. Townsend is godsend. 10-10. They get a big rush by Saquon Barkley. It's almost impossible to defend that man. 17-10 with DK getting a touchdown. But we get the turnover and get another touchdown right before the half. 24 to 10, we just have to hold him. And we do. We also get the ball back at the half, but we get sacked very deep into our own territory. Third and six. First and 10. We are able to convert on it. We're going downfield, but we're not because we throw an interception and we sack them. We also get an interception of our own. DJ Turner is showing up in this playoffs right now. And we get another touchdown, 31-10. to 10. I'm going to try to do this a little bit faster. The Giants go downfield and get a touchdown. We go downfield, get another touchdown. It's back and forth right now. They also get a touchdown. It is the fourth quarter. We go downfield and get a field goal. It's hard to come back from down by this much right now. They are down by 10. They might get the ball, but they do not. We chew the clock and win the conference championship and get our revenge on the New York Giants. A big way to end that game. 41-31. to 31. They almost came back, but we did not allow it. Justin Fields is taking us to the Super Bowl, and we just have to see who we have to beat in the biggest game of the season. And in the Super Bowl, we are facing the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we're in Miami. This is going to be a big game. All right, and here we are at the Super Bowl in the Hard Rock, and we start off with the ball. We are going downfield and get the first touchdown of the day, 7-0. to The Steelers have to punt it back to us, and we punt it back to them. They're getting some good yardage, but we get an interception. The Bears are going downfield. We're in field goal range, but we get sacked back to the 41 and miss the field goal. McPherson, you need to be making those in the Super Bowl. They punt it right back to us and put us within... I think the 20 it was third and one fourth and four a negative three rush by tony pollard not good at all we need to stop them and we do not they seem to be going downfield but i think we can stop them for a field goal seven to three we are up by four we need a touchdown to lengthen this game just a bit second and ten first and ten and we get the touchdown 14 to three two big penalties on them a pass is knocked away third and 23 fourth and 18 and they have to punt it to us we need a touchdown to really open this game up and we get it right before the half 21 to 3 they're trying to get something but they simply cannot and punt it right back to us as we finish off the quarter and kneel it the Steelers are slowly going downfield but end up punting it away anyways we're going downfield with some rushing. I think we're trying to chew the clock, if I'm being honest with you. 26-yard recession by Cole Komet and a sack by Alex Highsmith. We get a big gain by Tony Pollard for 19 yards, third and eight. And we get a 16-yard touchdown by Tony Pollard. It's looking good. 28-3. to We are holding them down right now as they get their first touchdown of the day. We punt it back to them. It is 28-17. We have to do something with this ball here. 
and we do get a field goal. We are up by 14. Two scores with 30 seconds left on the clock. Five seconds, and the Chicago Bears are your brand new Super Bowl winners for the first time in a very long time. We brought this team to the Super Bowl and finally got them another championship. Woo! Tony Pollard has been a big big contributor to the team he has been progressing very well over the years he is now i think about a 94 justin fields they didn't quite do it but he had the weapons around him he had the weapons around him for sure ah and that super bowl trophy is going to that stage right there it's probably going to justin fields if we're being honest with each other there it is he just might be the super bowl mvp but we'll have to see that in the upcoming awards and at the end of the rebuild, the Chicago, I almost said Chicago Bulls. <laughs> that won't happen for a while. The Chicago Bears win the Super Bowl 31 to 17. And Justin Fields is your Super Bowl MVP. We didn't have any award winners in terms of the regular season, but we won the most important award that there is. So if you did enjoy that, please like and subscribe. Let me know if you think I can do anything better or let me know what team you want me to rebuild next. I'm open to constructive criticism, constructive criticism. So open to talking to y'all in those comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.